All right. Welcome back to another episode of The Untamed Life. It's Christine. And, you know, today I want to talk about connection. I want to talk about really the power of connection and what I really believe. And I know a lot of us believe that the true epidemic is disconnection, the disconnecting from each other, disconnecting from what we love, disconnecting from our hearts, disconnecting from God, disconnecting from our earth, our planet, and being disconnected from play and our vision. And I think that we've gotten into a time and space where so many of us have dropped into this program of just being machines, going through the motions, right? Checking the boxes off your to-do list day in and day out, measuring everything, but how much we produce or put out, right? And it is such a dangerous place, I think, to be when we have lost ourselves. And really, I don't think I'm saying anything new here today, but an invitation to check in and ask yourself, like, how much of a human doing am I right now versus how much of the being, how much of a human being am I allowing myself to be? And I think that it's cute and whatever to have these Instagram quotes and these, you know, things that you read that are like, you're not a human doing, you're a human being. But when we really slow down and we look at our lives and we actually look at how we operate from the minute we wake up to the minute we go to bed and we just check and go, you know, like, how have I measured success today? Have I measured it by how much I checked off the list? Have Did I measure it by my output, my productivity and my production? And again, this is nothing wrong with being productive. You know, it feels great to be making forward momentum. It feels great to, you know, achieve and accomplish and overcome challenges. But when we're actually not able to relax <laughs> or enjoy our time together, unless we're distracted or we're doing um, we have a problem, right? We have a problem and we really measure, you know, what does a successful day look like? What does a successful week look like for me? And, and this came up because a couple things, number one, I was in Colorado last week. Those of you who know me and have followed me for a while, you know, that I have this tradition of doing one-on-one -on -one trips with my kids. And I love to take my children away on these like quality time trips because quality time a is one of my love languages. B, I've really come to know that they are so unique and they're so different, right? And they show up, they show up when you have them alone. And I, if you're parents, you know what I'm talking about, right? It's like you discover things about your child that like you didn't even know. And so Grayson is my 17 year old at the time of this recording. And we went to Breckenridge last week. And so we were out there and I was really looking forward to this trip because I have to tell you that we moved to North Carolina in June and I went through a, I would say it was a season of grieving, truly grieving where I felt like I had almost like lost a child. If you ask my husband, um, I struggled, I struggled with this move. I struggled with the distance, right? Like it seemed like boom overnight, right? You're, you're used to having one normal life and then it changed all of a sudden. And so I really, really miss this kid. Grayson is 17 and, you know, he's still in Canada and he's working for his dad and he's got his girlfriend and he's got his life there. And, and he was pretty much with me his entire childhood. Most of the time was spent at my house for years. They lived solely with me, even though I was divorced. And so this was just like a shock <laughs> to my system. Um, and I really, really, really look forward to these times to reintegrate, to connect and, and to have this one-on-one -on -one time. So we got to go to Colorado and, you know, we were there, we had a couple of days skiing, and then on day two, at the end of the second day, Grayson actually got injured. He, it was like such a fluke fall. We were skiing hard. He's doing jumps, going down all these crazy hills. And then like literally on the way to the, to get on the um, chairlift, he has this like total fluke fall, his knee twists, and it blows up like a balloon. And for the next two days, basically was completely out. And I wasn't sure if it was going to be like completely out for the entire time, the season, what, thank God it healed up. But I remember like, oh my gosh, right? Like we're so, we worked so hard. I had all this buildup to be here, to give him this amazing experience, to have this 
you know, we had a whole week in Colorado and at the end of day two, it's like, boom, right. His knee blows out and stuff. And, um, I could tell that he was bummed, right? But he was such a trooper. And I was bummed because I originally was like, oh my gosh, we're not going to be able to ski and all the things. But we really dropped into this place of just enjoying our time and going like super slow and relaxing. And honestly, it gave us an opportunity to have even more conversations, right? To take it even easier. And he was able to get up and walk around town a little bit and do some things. And so it, even though we weren't able to ski, right? I always say the reason why we're there is never really the reason why we're there. You know, you think you're there to ski, but the, really, you know that you're there to build connection, right? To spend quality time together. And honestly, for me to pour a little bit of love on him, right? I haven't been able to, to give him uh, a lot of love in the physical sense. So it was nice to be able to have this time for connection. And so, you know, it just really brought to my mind that sometimes, you know, we get so tripped up because we think, well, I'm here to ski or I'm here to do this, but really we have to ask ourselves, no, no, what, what am I really here for? Right. Why am I in this room right now? Why am I in Colorado right now? Why am I in this, you know, whatever it is. And I've been really leaning into this question a lot. Like, what are we actually here for? Not what do I think I'm here for? And at the root of it, it's like, we really are there to just connect so many times. We're just there to make connections, right? Literally make connections. And um, we were out for dinner one night. We went to the steakhouse. It's so cool, right? As you get to take them out to a really nice dinner. We found this like really old Western uh, steakhouse, super nice steakhouse. I got to take them out for bison ribeyes. And we were sitting at the table and right next to us was a four top. And you guys, this was not a cheap steakhouse, okay? This was like a, a nice $70 steak, bison ribeye. It was a very, I would say it was like a very big treat for him. And so this is a very nice steakhouse. It is pricey. It is delicious. The menu is amazing. And I really wanted to give my son like a cool experience, right? And really treat him. I don't get to see him that often. So it's super special for me. And we, we go there and right next to us, there was a table family of four that walked in. So mom, dad, and two kids. And I tell you that the entire time, the entire time that we were there, and it was a good 90 minutes, the family sat there. They never, never looked up at each other one time. Every single person in that family sat through that dinner with their phones out on the table. The sons, the father, the mother, everyone. I think the only time they looked up was to try each other's food or talk about what they ordered. But I didn't say anything. I looked over and then Grayson, my son looked over and he said, mom, I'm so glad. I'm so glad that's not us. And I thought, yeah, me too. My heart was breaking. And I'm bringing this from a place of not to judge, you know, but to really be thankful that we had made a priority earlier on, you know, really made it a priority that we had a no phones at the table rule. And it seems so simple. And again, it's not about the rules, kind of, I think it's important to have rules of engagement, but it's about what is the standard for how we get to experience our time together as a family when we have meals. I don't know if it's because I grew up in Italy and, you know, food and community and conversation is like so important that we just really have a, a rule that there's like no tech at the table, right? And I'm really fierce on this one, whether I'm going out with friends or people in business or whatever. It's just like, I make a very uh, clear intention that I don't put the phone, I'm fully present. And so it was really a cool thing to hear from him and for him to, to witness and also really sad because I thought like, wow, these people are in such a beautiful location. There is this incredible meal and there's so much opportunity here to explore and talk and unearth gems and mine gold really in each other. And I'm, you know, they were all, I don't know, the kids were playing video games and the parents were looking stuff up and it was just so much distraction, so much disconnection, right? And I didn't really see a lot of joy, right? It's just, it's sort of a lot of like dis, um, not disheartment, but you know, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Kind of complacency. Like you're in this amazing space and it was just like, yeah, 
whatever. And maybe it was, but it just contrast is great, right? Contrast really gives us an opportunity to check in with ourselves and go, wow, right. Where have I fallen into that sort of like discontentment or this inability to feel or express or experience, right? Unless I'm dis disengaged or distracted with something else. And I, I know that I talk about this a lot on this podcast, because I really think that this is the true, um, illness that we have in society that is running rampant. This is the true epidemic that we have an era now of disconnection, unlike anything else. And, you know, I want to talk about those five areas that I really think are, if, if you've been feeling sort of flat, um, numb, dissatisfied, you know, I'd really invite you to, to tune into like, are you deeply connected um, or are you completely disconnected in these areas? Number one is disconnecting from ourselves, right? It's so easy to go outside of ourselves, right? To an external opinion of us or an external idea or an external um, identity or version of us without getting to know who we really are. Like how connected are you to your heart, to your soul, to your body, to your desires, to, you know, your dreams, your vision, your fears. I was talking to a client last week while I was away and he was like, oh, this is, you know, like I'm feeling everything. And I said, yes, you're feeling the full range now before you only had like one speed, one feeling, right? It was like go mode all the time. You were a machine. And now it's like feeling all of the depth of the pain and the joy and the sorrow and the grief and the crazy delight, right? Like we open up our range when we become more connected to our, our hearts, right? Our emotions, our feelings. And I think that conversation came up because we were talking about the great pain teacher and how it's so easy for us sometimes to want to save someone from their pain or, you know, not let them experience pain instead of being okay with holding the space for someone to feel their pain, to go through it and letting them know, like, I know pain. I'm, I, I know it sucks. I'm right here. What do you need? How can I support you? And giving them the opportunity to experience the gift of the pain so that they can see and have the desire for the opposite of that. Right. I think we were talking about the fact that without the pain, sometimes we also don't have the desire. We don't get the contrast to say, oh, never again. This is not acceptable. I am not living here. If everything is always numbed out and sedated and just, you know, satiated for the moment, we don't ever get to experience the depth, right? That gives us that range that says, wow, I have felt, I have experienced what I don't want, or I don't want to live in that place. And so I, it amplifies your desire, it amplifies your longing, it amplifies that motivation to move forward. I think this is really important as we talk about being connected to ourselves is really being not only okay, but, you know, I don't know if you can get excited about pain, but really in a place where you're willing and open to feel all of it. And any time in my life where I've kind of gotten numb and I've felt that, you know, uh, I would consider myself to be a super passionate person, but there's definitely been times in my life where I felt more like numb or I couldn't feel or access certain emotions. And again, I was speaking to someone the other day and we were having this exact conversation. And I asked her like, out of all of the range of emotions, give me a percentage, like what percentage do you feel like you have access to of your range of emotions? And she said to me, I think I feel like I have about 30% access to what I know I can feel. And we were having this conversation about like, why I don't get excited. Like I don't express it. I just, I, I kind of feel it like, but I just don't have this flood of emotions and I don't, I'm not able to express it. So there was two questions I asked her. The first one was, you know, and I, I love to ask these sort of like scales, you know, to give people different ways of looking and tuning into, but like, how much access do you feel like you have to your emotions? And then out of that, right, 30%, what percent do you feel like you can express or freely express of that 30%? And it was a really eye-opening exercise for her because we got down to like, it was like 10% of the 30%. And so even though it was like, whoa, I was like, what is the good news here, right? The good news is she said to me, I have like 95% more range 
that I didn't even know I had access to. And so I love her because she didn't look at this as like, oh my gosh, you know, I'm sucking. She looked at it as like, wow, I have so much more room to feel and experience and express. And so it was moving into the place of connecting more to that, that those emotions, those feelings and giving herself permission to just feel the things, right? And, and not just feel, but connecting to, again, the things that light you up, connecting to the things that are inspiring you, that are calling you, that are motivating you, that are moving you, right? Connecting to your values, like really, are we connected to ourselves? The second thing here that I just talked about is really connecting to the spirit, um, which I think is so important, or the mystery, the awe, and the wonder of life, right? I talk a lot about being in that place of childlike wonder and awe and beauty. And, you know, to me, I mean, being connected to the earth, this is the third one. It's not necessarily the same. I do not believe earth is God. I, do, I believe that the earth is a manifestation, a creation of God, but it's such a beautiful reflection of the majesty and the awe and the wonder. And I really believe that these two go hand in hand. It's like, how connected are you to things that are really organic, natural beauty of the world, of the earth, of like getting down barefoot on the ground, spending time in nature, going to the mountains, putting your hands in living streams, living water. You know, there's many, many people much of society living in cities, you know, going from high rise to high rise, being surrounded by synthetic inorganic materials. If you have big office buildings, you're surrounded by tech and internet frequencies and waves. And there's not a lot of grounding that happens, right? We're wearing synthetic shoes. A lot of times we're not close to the earth. And so we can get through these periods where we feel completely disconnected from the earth ungrounded. And we don't have any like solid ground underneath us. It feels literally like we're sort of unstable, right? And so grounding ourselves to the earth and moving back into nature, into organic materials, eating foods from the earth, not synthetic made up edible things, because there's a lot of edible things on the market, but really connecting deep in our bones to the earth, right? The man was originally formed from the dust of the earth, really brings us back to our nature again. And so I would ask, you know, how connected are you to nature, to the earth, right? To the elements of earth, water, wind, fire, nature in its raw, pure essence. And how much of your life is inorganic, right? Everything from your food to your clothing, to your furniture, to the place that you live in. We've got to check in on these things because it sounds so simple that so many of us don't want to pay attention, but it is in the subtleties that we move mountains. It's in the subtleties that big shifts actually happen. And for me, whenever I feel ungrounded, unstable, a little bit numb, boom, one of the things I do, I drop back into that nature. I drop back into the on wonder. And I really spend time going into the secret place of my heart, which is again, going into connection with God, with the spirit, with the heart, and, and I don't say that the heart is the spirit, but I do believe the heart is the gateway to the spirit, to the soul. And so the secret place is in the heart. It's the quiet place, right? Where we go in and we meet God and um, we have conversation, we drop into conversation with God. And so again, you know, when we're talking about feeling separate, feeling disconnected, feeling alone and isolated, how much time do you spend dropping in, not just talking to some God that's sort of up in the clouds or far away, but really, if you're tuned into the spirit, you know that God is omnipresent. That means right here, right now, it's literally like moving in and out through you, saturating you, right? Like it is another dimension. It's not like a different location. We are clearly told that your body is the temple, the house of God right now. So it's like, oh, right now, I don't have to go far. <laughs> I'm just right here. I can be infused and filled, connected to. And it's like, it's like when you know something is in the room, but you haven't recognized it. You know, you know something like you're actually holding on to something or you're 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 wearing something or something is right there, but you are haven't recognized. It. I believe that a lot of us are up operating in the spirit this way we're disconnected because we don't recognize what's already in us we don't recognize the spirit that's already stirring moving talking guiding directing whispering nudging 
within us, you know, we're like, give me a sign, you know, give me a sign outside, you know, and it's like the signs are all buzzing and going off inside, but we're so disconnected from our bodies, disconnected from our hearts, we're disconnected, so we don't make the connection to God within, which is, you know, the Holy Spirit, the gift of the Holy Spirit is that you have access to God in you, you don't have to go to some temple, you don't have to go to a church building, you don't have to go you know, talk to a priest or anyone else, like you have direct access through the Holy Spirit, which was a gift to humanity, um, which is so beautiful. And, you know, the last piece that I want to say here is connection to each other, to humans, human to human connection, you know, and I do believe when I break this down and I talk to my clients, you know, I, I talk a lot about the connection of first husband and wife, right? The, the intimate connections in our life, like how are we doing in that intimacy with our spouse, with our partner? Because you can be, again, I, I say this a lot, but like you can be sleeping in the bed, you can be driving in the car for 12 hours, you can be going out to this amazing dinner in a five-star restaurant in the most epic location and still be completely disconnected from the people you love. For me, there is nothing more painful. I've been there. I've been in those relationships. I've been in those, you know, those beds. I've been in those places where I was like, I'm in the most beautiful place. I'm in the most, like, I should be so grateful here. And I feel so alone. And there's like a human right there. And so there is the physical proximity of us as humans coming together, which I think is really important. But I wanted to just tap in and say, you know, human to human, how connected do I feel right now to my husband, my wife, my children, right? And sometimes again, like I don't have the proximity because I've got three um, older children and we've got our three younger children that are here with us in North Carolina. And my 21 is 21 year old is here too, but I've got two kids that are still in Canada. And so even though I don't have the physical proximity, we can still cultivate the emotional, the spiritual the love proximity that, that lets them know that, you know what, we are close, we are connected and we can cultivate those relationships. We don't need to believe the lies that, oh my gosh, they're far away or whatever. Even Mark and I, I mean, we were together for what, two plus years, um, living in different countries, going back and forth. And we were cultivating a very intimate relationship and it was through communication. And, um, I just, as I, as I even share that, I'm going to read a text from my daughter because she sent me this two weeks ago, my daughter who's in Canada. And I'm just going to share a text because I had my phone right here. It said, good morning, mom. I just want to tell you, I love you. Even though it may not seem like I want your help sometimes, I'm super grateful for everything you've taught me, how you've paved the way for me to be comfortable in my feminine, independent energy, and literally could not imagine what it would be like if I didn't have you as my mom. Even though we're in different countries, a couple hundred miles has nothing on our connection. I love you so much, mom. Thank you for everything you do, how you show up every day for me with intention. And to me, it goes all feel special. Oh, I'm going to cry. But, oh, you know, I just, that made me feel so good because there are so many times when we're planting seeds and we don't see them. And I would just encourage those of you who maybe are going through a time, I know some of you are going through divorces, and this is the first time your kids have been in different homes. And you're like, I don't have my kids. And it can feel like someone is literally taking the life from you, taking their breath away. And you feel like you're losing time and you're losing memories and you're losing your kids. And I want to tell you that you can be planting seeds every day, regardless of whether they're in your physical atmosphere or not. You can do it through text. You can do it through voice notes. You can do it through prayer. You can do it through intention. You can do it through physical notes. Like there's so many other ways. And if you do have the luxury and the beauty of having these physical beings in your present, like let us be radically aware to recognize one another, to let ourselves be seen and heard and appreciate each other. And so, of course, the last piece there is I do believe in physical proximity of being with humans because I like humans. I like hugs. I'm a hugger. I'm Italian. I like I was just at a wedding last night in Canada for uh, two of my clients. It was awesome. And uh, 
you know, it was just feels great to be in a room dancing and chatting with people and getting to meet people. And so I think we've just come out of this area of people like not being together. I think a lot of us are really recognizing the importance that we are designed for each other. <laughs> We're designed to be in rooms together, to be in conversations together, to be sharing stories. Um, and I really hope that your eyes have been open to this as mine have. And, um, as, as I kind of wrap today, I just wanted to have this conversation about connection. And because sometimes when I feel like there's something wrong with me, or I'm feeling off, or I'm feeling numb, or I'm feeling lost, I always have to check in, like, where am I disconnected, right? When we start saying things like, oh, I feel alone, it's so easy to start just falling into the cesspool. But where do you need to reconnect, right? Can you reconnect to nature? Can you reconnect to your own heart, to God? Can you reconnect to other people that are actually going to give life, right? And sometimes just being in a cool high vibe environment and people watching is still connecting, right? Um, but where can you connect to music, connect to laughter, connect to joy, connect to some good words, right? Begin to really move into being a connector, an intentional connector. And remember, it's not always about proximity, although proximity is power, as Tony Robbins says, but we can be intentionally connecting all day long. At the end of the day, I really do believe that we are multidimensional human beings. I did a podcast on this a while ago. And if we are feeling numbed out, distracted, disconnected like machines, it's so easy, just like that, just like that. Right now, the minute you end up with this podcast, right now we're connecting, right? You're not alone. I'm right here. I'm whispering. I'm speaking in your ear. I'm hopefully stirring some things in your heart. Know that you're not alone ever, that you are always connected. And at any moment, at any time, you can choose what you get to cut the cord from and what you get to reconnect to. So if something is sucking the life out of you, there's too much synthetic, fake, distracting noise, whatever in your environment, too many toxic relationships or relationships that are not in alignment or whatever it is, you can cut the cord and shift gears. And so I hope that this uh, episode really left you with some things to meditate on around the power of connections in your life, especially those four and inviting you like, where do you get to go into deeper connection? Because the more powerful the connection, the more ampl things amplify around it. So that is a perfect place for me to lean into sharing something this, this year, 2023, that's coming up. God has really put a vision on my heart to expand the community of the warriors at heart, to really begin to work more and more with couples, with men and women who really want to move into a place of powerful connection, communication, leadership, growth, intimacy, trust together. I believe that we're in an era where, you know, we've been trying to go alone for a long time, right? We've been doing our thing. Guys have been doing their thing. You know, everyone's been kind of operating at a lone wolf, but we are really like the era has already shifted. The tides have turned. It is a season, a time of co-creation, of collaboration, of connection. And you know, this vision has been on my heart to really begin to open up and expand beyond just my private coaching practice. I'll still be taking clients intimately one-on-one. -on -one. If you want to learn how you can work with me one-on-one, -on -one, just follow the link in the show notes. I only take three or four people per quarter one-on-one -on -one for a deep dive, but I am opening up the initiation, which is going to be a community for men and women and couples who really want to move into this place of growth, healing, restoration of, you know, healing the stuff of the past, clearing the things that are still limiting them and really moving boldly together from a completely new place of understanding each other themselves from a completely new shared vision into the future that they're being called into. If you're still on this planet, you're walking and breathing, God's not done with you yet. He's got work for you to do. And I do believe that when we move into the place of powerful union and really become so much more than just like companions for each other, but we really are builders of each other and supporters of each other and number one fans of each other. And we know that we are here for relationship, for connection, to lead. This is where we begin to influence and make a ripple effect. So if this is speaking to you, you can click on the link below. I have one link now that you can access all of my coaching programs. Open that up. Click on the spot where it says, learn more about the initiation. There's a short video that you can watch. I share the vision on it. If it lands for you, I invite you to join me in 2023. I do not believe there's anything like it out there. Um, 
in, in that I know of in either the coaching or therapy communities, it's not therapy. It's definitely a forward thinking, um, forward program that is going to provide you with coaching, with support, with tools, with a live in-person event so you guys can connect with other powerful men, women, couples in person and remotely, because I do believe that all of you are designed to be leaders and community builders and that God has a calling for every single person that's listening here, whether you're going to be used through business as an entrepreneur, executive, in your community, you are here to move things. You are here because you're an action taker. You are here because there is a design and a plan and gifting for you. And I'm so curious, have you activated it? I am really excited about continuing to activate more and more of my God-given gifts, moving more into the calling that he's putting on my heart. And that's exactly why I'm doing this in 2023. You know, it's a calling when it wasn't your idea. Okay. <laughs> You're like, um, I would have totally done this different. Okay. And I actually found myself trying to negotiate a little bit with this one and go, Oh, what if I do it this way? What if I do it that way? Because I was going back to what was familiar, what was comfortable, what I knew I was equipped with, what I felt, you know, like I, I could handle, I can do that. This one is stretching me really. I gotta be honest with you guys, this is stretching me. I know that I cannot build this community alone. It's going to require me to like really show up, be all, all in for you guys. I always show up all in, but this one is stretching me yet again. And I love it. Cause I'm like, all right, let's go. I cannot do this alone. So I'm doing this totally in collaboration with you guys that are joining me with the spirit, with my husband. And I want to invite you, if this is speaking to you, 2023 is a year I'm opening up the initiation. Um, we start the last week of January. Make sure that you follow the link. There are a certain amount of seats open. There's a select handful of one-on-one -on seats available if you want to upgrade and get more support with me in this journey. So again, you guys, I want to thank you for being here. I want to thank you for listening to the show. Um, if this resonates with you, share it with a friend, right? Share it with someone who needs to hear this message. And if you haven't done so already, I would love if you would leave a five-star review on iTunes. Thank you again for being here. Here's to moving into a place of powerful, co-creation. Bye for now.